Well, the title of the message this morning is Distractions. I have too many squirrels in my life. Maybe you do too. And some of you may have no idea what I'm talking about. But I hope that in a few moments you'll come to the same realization that I did. As a result, you may come to the conclusion that you too have too many squirrels in your life as well. Squirrel! You know what they are, right? You know what they are. Things that distract. I can remember as a younger parent, and uh, David especially would be the one that would notice everything under the sky. We'd be having a conversation, I'd be saying, David, focus right here, because he'd be looking at everything except for what I wanted him to look at. That's his nature. And as oftentimes it was frustrating because it's these distractions that distract us from doing what we know we should be doing. I can remember a time many years ago, I think I was probably in our first or second, third year of marriage, and we went down to Mississippi to be with uh, one of Don's relatives. And uh, for the most part, you know, we have relatives in Mississippi, and for the most part, I can speak very clearly with most of them. But Gerald and Shirley, I have no idea. You have to like concentrate and work hard at making sure you catch every word. And they're not watching because they don't know what Facebook is. But Gerald and Shirley, I mean, they'd be talking, and I'm just sitting there. It's like you've got to put seven filters on and try to really, even reading lips, it doesn't work. But we went to Gerald and Shirley's house so that we could go squirrel hunting. There were squirrels everywhere. And I'm just telling you, we brought a ton of ammo that day. We had our 22s, we had our 12 gauges, we had other stuff. We were just going to have a heyday. We were out on the farm. I mean, next neighbor's three miles down. We're, we're, we're good. Squirrels everywhere. But I'm telling you, to save my life, we couldn't get one. <laughs> I mean, we were so frustrated. They were everywhere, but yet they were like running so fast, we just could not get one. As fast as we thought we were going to aim in on one, the thing was gone. It disappeared into like thin air. And finally, we realized that there was like 10 of them in that tree right there. And I'm telling you, as dumb as it was, we sat there shooting at that thing. And we just knew that if we couldn't get that thing fair and square, we were just going to bombard it and watch it drop. Didn't work. We walked away that day not having shot anything. For all the effort, for all the ammo, for all the time, we got nothing, including our tamales that we wanted to make with them. We got nothing. Now just keep that story in the back of your mind, and I'll come back to it later. But let me share with you just a few, moment, a few moments some of the folks that I believe had squirrels in the Scripture. Samson had a squirrel. Remember Samson? Big, tough, strong Samson who could do anything who had the might of, of, of a thousand men who could just absolutely destroy anybody that would come in his path. But the problem with Samson is that he had a squirrel. And the name of the squirrel was Delilah. Delilah was his distraction. No matter what was happening, Delilah was right there constantly being a distracting him, distracting him from what he knew God wanted him to do, to what God wanted him to be, but he, didn't, he couldn't keep his focus because the squirrel just kept coming there, and just by the time he started doing something, she'd, she'd show up again. Samson had a squirrel. You know, the disciples had a squirrel. I mean, just for a little while, you think that as Christ was preparing to, to end his life and to go before the cross of Calvary at, at Mount Golgotha, and you, you think, just for a moment, could you not just pray with me for an hour? But the disciples had a squirrel. And the squirrel was tiredness. It was the thing that distracted him from doing what God had asked him to do and spending that time in prayer. David had a squirrel. The squirrel was a woman who was bathing named Bathsheba. It was a complete distraction. It took him off focus. It made him not concentrate on what God had for him to do. And God allowed the, or God in, 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 to, in teaching us realize, it helps us realize that there are things that come into our life that sometimes we can't control, but we absolutely have to control how we respond to them, right? So there's squirrels that he's allowed, or he has to deal with, excuse me. Eve had a squirrel. The squirrel was a serpent who tempted her to make wrong choices. I don't know about you, but have you ever dealt with that squirrel? 
You ever had a circumstance in your life where you know you're supposed to do this, you know you're supposed to go here, you know you're supposed to be involved with this, but there's this distraction that is tempting us to do something that we know is not right, something that we know is not best, something that we know that God doesn't want us to have any part of. And yet it's there. And we have to choose how we are going to respond to that distraction in our life. Achan had a squirrel. Can you imagine just for a moment being Achan and having this victory that God, is, uh, God was going to give us and yet he chose to steal the wedge of gold. And that distraction that that wedge of gold caused ruined his life. Now he ruined his life. It just took his life. It took the life of his family members. Talking about a squirrel causing problems. Achan had to deal with a squirrel. How about King Saul? King Saul had a squirrel. And the squirrel was called approval. And you remember what it was like when Samuel said, what's the meaning of the bleeding of the sheep that I hear in my ear? He goes, the people. The people made me do it. The people spared the best. The people wanted to give these things back to you, God. No. He wanted the approval of men. He wanted to be able to say that, hey, I did most of what God asked me to do, but the people. He wanted the men's approval. How many of us have had to deal with that kind of a squirrel in our lives in the past? Because we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. We don't want to make anybody upset. We want everyone to be happy with us. But we allow this distraction called approval to take away from us and what God is trying to do in our lives. When we could have had a a chance to stand and to stand up for right and for righteousness, we gave in to the distraction. King Saul had a squirrel. How about Martha? Remember Mary and Martha? I think this is a squirrel that a lot of us deal with. We have a to-do list. Martha Squirrel was a to-do list. It was the very thing. I mean, you have, can you imagine? Put your thinking caps on just for a moment. And you're walking there and Jesus has come into your presence. And you're there with Mary and Martha are there together. And while one is trying to serve, the other one is, is working on checking off the to-do list. Man, you don't think that was a distraction for Mary, or for Martha, excuse me? I mean, can you imagine? I don't know about you, but if Jesus is coming to my house, I don't care how messy it is. I don't care how many dishes are in the sink. I don't care how much it needs vacuumed or dust. That stuff is going to be left alone for a few minutes, right? But we got the to-do list that we got to deal with. And it's just a distraction. It's a squirrel that we don't need in our lives, and it's what takes our focus off what we know is most important onto something that is not very important or less important. I think sometimes rich people have squirrels. And the squirrel is the love of money or discontentment. How much is enough? Literally, how much is enough? I mean, if I'm worth $10 million, what's, what's one more? Who cares, right? But it's one more. If I'm worth $10 million, what's $20 million? It's $20 million, but I'm not happy there. Someone used to say, when someone reaches a billion, how much is enough? The next billion. I will never understand that. I will never be able to experience that, and that's okay. But the reality is, it's a squirrel. It's a distraction. Because it robs us of our contentment. It robs us of our joy. And you know what? Sometimes, poor people have squirrels. And this squirrel is very similar. It too is also discontentment. Because I want more. I don't have enough. I'm jealous of so-and-so who has what I want. And we constantly are dealing with squirrels in our life. And it's just as we're telling a story, and all of a sudden, squirrel! And everybody looks over there, and you forget the story that you're talking about. Because they're distractions. And distractions keep us from doing what God wants us to do. And we have spiritual squirrels in our life. And I'm telling you, this is the craziest message I've ever preached about squirrels. Normally, it's very comfortable going through book verse by verse. I like that, but God just said not this week. So bear with me. So we know a squirrel is really nothing more than a distraction. A distraction is something that takes your focus off of something important and puts it on something of lesser importance. It's a distraction. So let me ask you a question this morning. What's your squirrel? What is it that is distracting you from doing what God wants you to do in your life? What is the distraction that you're allowing to take precedence so that you're not doing what God has for you to do? We all have them. I I don't care if you're sitting here this morning, so I don't have distractions. We all have distractions at one point or another. 
We all have those things that creep in. And God says, I want you to be laser focused on doing this. And you're too busy leaving. You know, I don't know about you, but I have them. Everybody has them. And we have to learn to deal with them so that we can accomplish what God has for us. So what's your squirrel? Are you willing to admit that you got one? Are you willing to deal with the squirrel? There are many things scripturally that are of great importance. And I haven't gotten to the Word yet, but we will, trust me. But there are very many things that are important. And if I were to kind of give you each an impromptu quiz going around the room this morning, you'd say, absolutely yes, Pastor, you're right. That is important. It is very important that I read my Bible and spend time in prayer. And that, would, would anybody disagree with that? We all should spend time in prayer. We should all be learning what God's Word has for us. And we should be taking the time to read it and to apply it and ask questions about it and see what God's trying to teach us through it. And we know that's very important. But yet, they're squirrels. They're called TV sets. They're called to-do lists. Uh, they're called hobbies. They're called friends. And we can justify that they're all good things. They're things that are not in and of themselves anything wrong with them, but they're squirrels. They distract us from spending the time with God that we ought to have. And guys, no excuse. You ought to be people who read the Word. You ought to be people who spend time in prayer. And if you're not doing it, don't expect your family to do it. You've got to set the example in this area. You've got to be a man of the Word. You've got to be a man who prays. And we can look at all kinds of Scripture that backs that up. But, you know, we'd also agree that sharing our faith is of great importance, is it not? Would anybody disagree with that? We ought to be people who spend time at least building relationships so that we can cultivate uh, an opportunity to share our faith with those that are around us. We know that's of great importance. But we have to deal with distractions. Squirrels that take our mind off that and take our focus off that. And it's things like fear. Fear is a squirrel that just runs in front of us when we're talking about our faith. When we're getting ready to share the Gospel. Or maybe it's a, a squirrel of a rejection. It's rejection, that fear of rejection. I don't know what to say. I don't know how they're going to respond. They might get upset with me. And we realize, as we said before, two things you just don't talk about, religion and politics. You know, they're just going to, you know, it's going to break a relationship so we can't deal, we can't go there. They're squirrels. They're distractions. Would anybody disagree that walking in obedience is of great importance as a child of God? I mean, if we were to go around the room and say, would you say walking in obedience is very important? And yet we let squirrels of selfishness come in the way because I want what I want. I want, it, I, I, I want what I want, and I want it when I want it, and I want it as often as I want it, and I really don't care what anyone thinks. I'm worried about number one. It's all about me. And these things become squirrels that keep us from being obedient to what God has for us. To do and to be. Or how about exercising honesty and integrity? We would say as a child of God, those things are really important. That we as a child of God reflect the image of God even in our everyday dealings, in our life and in our practices, in our, in our business dealings, in our conversations. We ought to be people who exercise honesty and integrity. Amen? That should be a part of who we are. But then all these little squirrels of selfishness come in. And greed. And discontentment. And wanting more. And pretty soon, what we know is right, we don't deal with. Because I want more. I want just a little bit more. And we're not satisfied. Or how about upholding a life of purity? I mean, I know that God wants us to be pure in our relationships. He wants us to be pure in how we conduct ourselves and not be involved in, in fornication and idolatry and in pornography and all these things. And yet there's these squirrels. And it seems like these squirrels are everywhere in this area. Lust, sinful desires, squirrels. We know that it's of utmost important to stay, take a stand here, but God also understands I'm human, right? I mean, I'm, I'm a man. I, I, I struggle with these things, and He understands that. No, that's hogwash. We got to stand for what we know is right. So, once again, what's your focus? What's your squirrel that's distracting you from the focus that God has for you? A squirrel can be a temptation or anything that causes you to lose focus. And you know, the list could go on. We all know that there are things that are of utmost importance, right? 
and yet we allow the distractions to keep us from what we know is important. And can I just say, those squirrels need to be shot. Those squirrels need to be put away. The list could go on. So what are some of the priorities that God has established for us that should be our focus? You know the verse. I'm not even going to have you turn there. But Matthew 6.33 says what? But seek ye third. But seek fourth. Seek somewhere in the top ten list. The kingdom of God. Right? Is that what it says? It says seek ye first. Say it together. First. You know what first is? It's a priority. It means it's the first one on the list of things that we're to consider. And we are to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Then all these other things shall be added unto us. The reality is is that many of us don't have it first. We have it in the top ten list. And we're satisfied with that. And that's not right. We ought to be careful that we're not allowing other things. You know, we in America, we're very easily satisfied with other things. And we are good at patting ourselves on the back and saying, well, I'm pretty close. Good is good enough. We're okay. Because we're not as bad as them. We're not as bad as them. We're really not doing too bad. We're in the top, maybe we were even in the top five list. But you know, as long as we're getting some things done, oh, we're okay with that. Shame on us. Shame on every one of us if we're willing to settle. I mean, why would we run a race if we're okay with 10th place? Why? We ought to want to win, right? Uh, I ain't going to lie. I, I got a little bit of a competitive spirit in my mind. Right? So I can remember going to Don's parents, uh, Don's grandparents' house, and we team up, we play Rook, or we play some other game, and she's like trying to give the game away because we're getting too far ahead. So much so that we end up losing the game because she's feeling sorry because we got ahead. She is way too sympathetic when it comes to playing games. My Bible says you go for the victory. Doesn't mean I'm going to rub it in, but I'm going for it. Right? But the reality is, who plays the game saying, okay, I'm okay if I lose? No big deal. we got 12 of us in the race, and if I come in 12, whoo, sweet Jesus, I'm going to do it. No, why would we run if we're not going to try to do the best that we can? Who wants to get into NASCAR and say, yeah, I'm okay coming in 23rd place? Who does that? But why do we do that when it comes to the things of God? Why is it that we are satisfied with saying, I'm not seeking God first, but it's on the agenda, it's okay. As long as it's somewhat of a priority, it's not the main priority, but I'm okay with that. Shame on us. It says, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, then all these other things. Would you agree with that? Take your Bibles and turn to Philippians chapter 3. Let's look at another priority that God has established for us. And trust me, folks, we don't have the time to look at all the priorities that God has given us in one message. We might have to come back about four more times with this. Philippians chapter 3, beginning with verse 10, says this. My goal is to know Him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His sufferings being conformed to His death, assuming that I will somehow reach the resurrection from among the dead. I mean, he says, I want to know Him. I want to know Him. Think about that. Do we have that kind of a priority in our life? To know Jesus Christ and the power of His resurrection, that's power. That's not a position. That's not becoming high in rank. That's the idea of I want to know Jesus Christ and the power of His resurrection. The very power that raised Him from the dead. Look at verse 12. It says, not that I've already reached the goal or I'm already perfect. He says that, and that word perfect means mature. He says, I'm not fully mature in this area yet. I still have some things to learn. I have some areas to grow in. So he says, not that I have already reached the goal or I'm already perfect, but I make every effort to take hold of it because I have been taken hold of by Christ Jesus. He says, the very fact that Jesus Christ has done something in my life makes me want to draw closer to Him. Question. Has Jesus Christ taken hold of your life? And if so, does that make you want to draw closer to Him? And if that's the truth, why are we letting distractions in? Squirrels that come in our midst of us and just take our focus off what God has for us. Then he says, verse 13, Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself to have taken hold of it. If, it, if he hasn't, who has? I mean, here's a man who set the example for us. But he says, 
but one thing I do. Forgetting what is behind and reaching forward to what is ahead, I pursue as my goal the prize promised by God's heavenly call in Christ Jesus. He said, that's what I'm shooting for. I'm shooting to go closer to God every day. I want to be more like Jesus every day. I'm not worried about what's behind because I can't live there anymore. Everything that's in my past, that's a past squirrel that's already run. And now I'm looking forward to what God has for us. That's my goal. How about 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 61? 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 61. It says, Be wholeheartedly devoted to the Lord our God to walk in His statutes and to keep His commands as it is today. Let me just ask you to put your thinking caps on just for a moment. I want you to look at that one word. Wholeheartedly. Now, let me ask you a question. If we were thinking of this word wholeheartedly in terms of commitment, and the commitment scale is on 1 to 10, is wholeheartedly a 10 or a 1? <laughs> there you go. Is it a 3? Is it a 5? Is it a 7? What does wholeheartedly mean? It means with everything that we've got. Right? That's hard. But it's our goal. He says, be wholeheartedly... And then look at that next word, devoted. Y'all know what devoted means, right? Committed. You're, you're all in. To the Lord our God, to walk in His statutes and to keep His commands as it is today. So, smorgasbord Christianity. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Not so much of this and uh, none of that, but over here, yeah, a little bit of that. A little bit of church, a little bit of giving, a little bit of service, not so much all the services, but some of them. Smorgasbord Christianity, is that wholeheartedly devoted? I can't hear you. No, no there we go. I'm just making sure we're on the same page here. Wholeheartedly means we're all in. Wholeheartedly means I'm giving it my all. Now, let me just say for a minute, I mean, I can't take a vacation. I mean, I have to be at every time the service doors are open. I'm saying we know in our heart whether or not we're wholeheartedly committed or not. We know that. And you and God know whether or not you're trying to throw one over on them and say, well, I'm committed. You might be able to disguise it from everyone else, but you can't hide it from God. Wholeheartedly devoted to the Lord our God. And here's where to walk in His statutes, and to keep His commands as it is today. Here's another f familiar one. You know it, but I'm going to tell you to turn it. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. You've heard this a thousand million times in your lifetime. I'm sure if you've been in church at all in your life, you've heard this over and over and over again. But just in case you forgot. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not rely on your own understanding. In some of your ways... It, wait, wait, I read that wrong. In most of your ways... Wait, I'm having a hard time reading this because it calls for some surrender and some commitment. It says, in all your ways, acknowledge Him. And He said, I'll direct your paths. You see, sometimes we want our path directed, but we don't want to surrender our way of getting on the path. We want the blessings of God, but we don't want the sacrifices to God. We want the blessings of God, but we don't want obedience to God. We want God's wisdom, but we don't want to surrender our wisdom to get it. I'm just, as I'm pointing out, i got three coming back, so I'm talking to myself here. So just maybe this doesn't apply to you, but it does to me. It applies because I'm selfish. Talk to my kids. They'll tell you. My flesh is stronger than I want to admit. My mind can justify, rationalize, excuse anything that I want to do and come up with a good reason, in, at least in my mind. Anybody else have that problem? Man, I'm sinful at times. I don't want to admit that. I don't want to tell anybody that. And I certainly don't want any of you to find out about it, but some of you have already got the secret out of the bag. You find out how sinful we are at times. Because we're fleshly. But he says, if you'll just acknowledge me in everything, 
I'll direct you. We know that should be a priority. But then the squirrel of doing things in our own might, in our own strength, in our own wisdom, in our own knowledge comes in front of our focus and it just takes us off kilter. And just in case we forgot something, just in case we forgot something that should be a priority in our life, just in case we can't think of all of them, he throws in 1 Corinthians 10.31. So whether you eat or drink, I mean, anybody not eat and drink every day, several times a day? Something so consistent, something so continuous, something so constant in our life is eating and drinking. He says, whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do. There's the priority, right? Not just some things, not just certain days like Sunday, but all the time, right? In all things and in all times, do all to the glory of God. What distracts us from doing things to the glory of God? Our own minds, our own selfishness, our own desires, our own pride and arrogance, and we know better and we know more often and we fill in the blank. He says, do everything for the glory of God. I don't know what's you, but I've had a lot of squirrels. I started off the sermon this morning. I've got a ton of squirrels. Doggone it, I hate squirrels. I get sick of them. And I've been saying for the last year, when God is at work, Satan does not want to let that go unchallenged. I believe that with all my heart. When God is at work, Satan does not want to let that go unchallenged. So squirrels come. This last year has been a theme of, if there's only been one constant, it's been the constant of broken down vehicles. Right, David? Good Lord. It just seems like every time we get a vehicle, something went wrong with it. But he's a mechanic. He can fix it. I've heard that this year. He's a mechanic that has no shop, no tools, and no place to work on it, but he's going to school to become one. So you have the knowledge, but no place and no tools and no ability. Just constant. Just every time we got a vehicle fixed, it broke down. Get a different vehicle, run great, and then break down. Fix it, break down. Then get a third vehicle, it breaks down. It, it's been the only constant in the last year and a half. It's been broken down vehicles. How about this squirrel? Driving through Nashville. This, this is true. This is really, this happened a couple days ago. Driving through Nashville, I got my 28-foot trailer behind my truck. Minding my own business, just going down the road at 2.30 in the morning, somewhere in there, I don't know, 2.33 in the morning. David's behind me in his vehicle, in his trailer. And all of a sudden, I hit a bump and boom, boom. First time in my life it ever happened. Trailer jumps off the ball. The cotter pin that was holding the thing down snapped. And my trailer, next thing you know, my trailer's going across three lanes of highway. And all of a sudden, I'm glad because my little safety pin that was on my trailer brakes popped out, engaged my trailer brakes, and within probably 75 yards, I had it off on the side of the road. Talk about a squirrel. I did not want to deal with that distraction. We had been on the road for only God knows how many hours, coming back from Houston. It's like the road that wouldn't stop. And now I've got to deal with this. But here's the blessing in it. Right then and there, I prayed. I wasn't happy about it. Who gets happy about that stuff? But here, I prayed about it. I get out. David's freaking out. Because he and Paul were like watching this from the rear end. But you know, literally, 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Pulled it off to the side. Unhooked every, the chains that kept it from getting away. Re structured my truck, backed up, put it back on, put a nut and bolt through it. I had a, had a floor jack in my tail, right inside my tailgate. Bounced it up. Not one bit of damage. Now, this happened to Jake a couple a year ago, going through the can of worms. Messed up three tires. Came and smashed in the back of his tailgate. And messed up his bumper and his rear. And not one scratch. Didn't hit my tailgate, didn't touch my, my bumper. Nothing was broke. The tires were fine. Perfectly. It just came to rest right nice and gently behind my truck. Think God didn't answer prayers? Think God wasn't with me? Amazing. 
was on the road in 10 minutes. Took the next exit just to kind of do a look over after we got off the highway and semis coming by, a foot and a half behind my back, 80 mile an hour. Took the first exit, relaxed for a minute. And David says, Dad, come here. I'm like, oh no, it's another squirrel. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> here, put your foot on the brake. Why do I need to put my foot on your brake? Oh, my, 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 I can't put my shifter in park. It won't work. I'd have been screwed. I'm just telling you. I don't, I don't know how to deal with that stuff. I, I don't know how to deal with that stuff. But being the mechanic that he is, what do you need? I need a nut and bolt. Whoever, see, he sold one truck, put a motor in the other truck. They didn't hook up the linkage underneath it very well. Bottom line is, it all fell apart. Couldn't put it in park. Maybe some of you are thinking, well, that's not that big a deal. It would have been to me because I don't know how to deal with it. Anybody else? I am not a mechanic. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, David. Now, other people, I am not a mechanic. I trust in you guys. Give me a nut and bolt, Dad. We got this. Five minutes. He has it back together. We're on the road again. Health issues. You ever dealt with that squirrel? You just want to live life. I mean, is that really asking so much? I'm not looking. Look, I'm, I'm not trying to be a multimillionaire. I'm not trying to rise and get in all the greatest positions. I'm not trying to accumulate everything under the sun. I just want to live life. I just want to have decent health. Is that asking a lot? I mean, anybody else with me on that one? But then there's a distraction because it's not as it should be. It's not as you would like it. Squirrel! And then, yeah, let's just throw in for good measure more, health, more vehicle issues. Just because <laughs> they're going to be there. More squirrels. I don't know about you, but I hate those things. I wouldn't pick them. I certainly would not choose them. Job issues. More squirrels. Anybody want that squirrel? Things were going just fine till they... Who wants that squirrel? It's a distraction. Because all these things... Now, here's the deal. You can let it, the squirrel be a distraction. Or you can cause it to help you refocus. For too many of us, we're content to let the squirrel be there. We're content to let the squirrel continue to distract us. Because after all, it's so cute. I mean, look at that squirrel sitting over there by the tree. He's trying to get into that bird, bird feeder. <laughs> Good thing I got an upside down two liter bottle on it. He can't get in there. And we're sitting there watching the cute little squirrel trying to steal the food. That's not his. And we let the distractions steal the joy and the blessings of serving God and walking in obedience to God that are ours to enjoy, but we're letting these things distract us so we miss out on them. Right? Let's be honest. Distractions. Squirrels that are in our view, but we can choose how we're going to respond to them. You see, any of you who are really serious about having a bird feeder, you're figuring out a way to get the squirrel out of it. Right? Because you don't want the squirrel. Neither should we want the distractions that are causing our life that take our focus off serving Jesus Christ. In fact, can I just say this? There will always be squirrels, even if you don't see them. You see, I remember when we were out hunting, the squirrels. We knew they were there. We could hear them. It was almost like they were up in the tree going, <laughs> you can't eat the broadside out of a barn. <laughs> they were there, and it was driving us nuts. And because we knew we were there, we were like, we're going to take that leaf pile out of there, whether they like it or not. We're going to get it one way or the other. The squirrels were there, even though we couldn't see them. You catch my drift? They're always going to be squirrels, whether you see them or not. And what you need to determine is how you're going to handle it when they come. James 1.14 says, But each person is tempted when he is drawn away and enticed by his own evil desires. So we have to call into check what is our desires? What are the desires that we have? Are our desires funneled through serving God and walking in obedience with Him and growing that relationship with Him? Or is it funneled through the funnel of 
selfishness and greed and materialism and positions and doing whatever it is that it takes to get what I want. See, I can either serve myself or I can serve God. It's either going to be all about me or all about Him. It's our choice. It's our choice. Who we are going to be focused on. What we're going to be focused on. And I'll close with this last verse in Mark chapter 14, verse 38. It says, stay awake and pray. Why? Just stay awake and pray? He says, there's a reason behind what I'm telling you to do. Stay awake and pray so that you won't enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is what? Weak. Anybody else deal with the flesh that's weak at times? Just me? Come on, folks. We all struggle with that. And we're all going to deal with squirrels. Whether you see them or not, they're going to be there. And when they come, how are you going to respond? Amazing. Isn't it amazing how simple a squirrel can look? I mean, we're sitting here listening to a message, and all of a sudden, oh man, it's snowing outside. Squirrel! Lost it all. Just out of sight, out of mind. Man, squirrels are subtle at times. But they always have one thing in common. They captivate our attention. They distract. Can I just challenge us? We need to stay focused now more than ever in our life. Amen? We need to be focused on what God has for us. I promise you this is probably the last time you hear a message about squirrels, but well, maybe I shouldn't promise. But how are you going to respond when they come in your presence? Everybody's got squirrels. Samson, those great, awesome followers of Christ called disciples. Eve, one of the first ones ever created. David, who had a heart of man after God's own heart. God's word tells us. King Saul. Martha, and all of her wonderful get it doneness. Had squirrels. Aiken. <laughs> we could list the list could go on. We could we could mention twenty five others. What's your squirrel? Because you know right now as I'm sitting here, what is the one thing that distracts you from going all in? What's the thing that is, that comes in between you and serving God? What's the one thing that hinders you from being completely obedient? Those are squirrels, and they're distracting you. I don't know about you, but I don't want to get rid of them. <laughs> I don't want distractions. Because I still feel like with all my heart that every time God does something good, Satan does not want to let it go unchallenged and the squirrels come. If I can't stay focused on working and serving God in the church here, he's allowing pride. You know, you know what that stinking basement is right now at my house? It's a distraction. It's a squirrel. It's driving us insane. I didn't have a clue. I mean, and, and I'm, I'm telling you, like clockwork. Ask my wife, ask Paul, ask anybody that knows me. Every time I go away, something like this happens. The washer breaks down. I mean, I don't care. If I go somewhere, something's going to happen. It does every time. And my wife calls me and she goes, Can you know how you look back sometimes, you know, a couple years from now, and you look back and you say, <laughs> well, you remember when? And I'm thinking immediately, where is she going with this? Yeah, well, you remember the time that you were gone and I woke up and I put my foot on the floor and there was like four inches of water? I'm like, what? Are you serious right now? you got to be kidding me right now. Nope. Squirrel! Because you know what it does? It distracts everything for the next two weeks. You can't even focus on anything because you can't find anything. All of the clothes in our basement are like piled on a bed in the center of the room as they've cut up the walls. It's crazy. You know what it is? It's one big distraction keeping us from doing what we should be doing. Right? What's your distraction? What's your squirrel? How are you going to handle it? Because right now, I don't really like it. I don't like those things. They're a pain in the hinder. Come on. I mean, I don't, I'm getting looks. I'm saying words today I shouldn't say. <laughs> I'm real. I'm sorry. Forgive me. I'm going to hear it when I get home. <laughs> I will tell you one more story, and with this I close. I remember when I was my first church, 
and uh, standing before the pulpit committee, and uh, they say, Pastor Ken, I said, yes. So tell us some of the things that you struggle with. And I was going to be funny, because I really didn't know what else to say at the moment, because I didn't really think about telling them all my flaws. So I just said, well, if you make me really mad, I'm just going to deck you. And all of a sudden they went, oh. I said, I'm just kidding, I'm not going to hit anybody, I promise, I'm just kidding you. But I said, here's what you have to know. You cut, I, you cut me, I bleed red, just like you. I'm a sinner saved by grace. Trying to serve God, trying to walk in obedience. I'm not perfect, as you know. Um, but we have squirrels. Things that distract. So you have a choice today. And every day. How are you going to deal with that squirrel when it runs in front of you? How are you going to deal with it? You're going to give in and say, oh, it's a cute little thing. Look at him trying to get that bird feeder seed seed. Wow, it's just gorgeous. Isn't it cool? Look at that thing. Oh, look how close he come to the, to, the, to the window. Wow. We can say it's cute and sit there and get our attention on it and focus on it and watch it and something to talk about later. Or we can say, you know what? It's there, but I've got to do something to get it away. I gotta protect that bird feeder. I gotta put something on it so they can't climb up the pole. I gotta do something. Put some lard on it and something so it can't get there. It's gonna make it slippery. What? We gotta fix it because I don't want to deal with it. How are you gonna deal with your distractions? Because the more distractions you don't deal with, the more you're not gonna be following God and being obedient to Him, what He has for you. You gotta deal with it your choice. And God gives you an opportunity to deal with it daily. Squirrel! 